So a while ago this trend of is it possible to beat X without Y started, and these videos were kind of fun, but it makes me wonder if it's possible to beat those games. Just be be beat them normally without any challenges. In this investigation video I'll be playing through Super Mario Bros to figure out if it's possible to beat the game. So I chose to do the All-Stars version of this because the NES version, I was having trouble finding an NES version that would work properly, um, or rather wasn't the European release and was a modified. There were quite a few like NCSC ones but they were modified, so um, I opted for the All-Stars release instead, which is going to turn out to be a mistake because All Stars is super fucking wonky in loads of ways that I didn't even realise until I started attempting this. I would have taken the secret area but uh, I grabbed this one up and it prevented me from doing that so... All in all this first level is pretty easy. I mean it's the first level in the game of course it's easy but yeah nothing really can go wrong here unless you just don't know what you're doing I guess that that would be something that could go wrong. One dash two, a classic level, and of course I took the secret exit because I am not playing through this whole game. <laughs> No way did I say this was a full completion playthrough, I just said that I was beating the game, that was it. So yeah, this is using globs. If you don't like that, feel free to dislike and leave right now, I don't care. Vardash 1 is a pretty standard thing, like you've got the lack to throwing spinies down at you, but other than that it's not really that difficult of a level. Uh, the main difference here though between SMB1, like the NES version and the All Stars version, is that in the All Stars version the hitboxes are pretty different and the most notable example of this is with the piranha plants. So in SMB1 you could just do a full power jump over most of the piranha plants in the game um, and you'd go like sort of through the top half of the piranha plant but in this game if you attempt that you'll take damage so that's why I'm taking it pretty slowly around the pipes. Otherwise I would have just jumped straight through them if this was the NES version, but it's not, so... Now 4 2 was an interesting level because I made a slight mistake when trying to hit the vine to go to wall 8. Uh, it's possible to jump off the descending platform and hit the leftmost brick, triggering the vine, but if you... Uh, if you get the timing and like positioning wrong, you'll just hit the invisible block under it and make it nigh impossible to actually hit the brick. Uh, in the NES version, I normally don't have a problem hitting the brick if I do somehow make that mistake, but in this version I just couldn't. I just could not do it. I actually ended up running out of time. Um, but actually no, I killed myself, but I, I almost ran out of time is the point I'm trying to make. I, I actually could have gone that way. But yeah, lesson learned, do not attempt that jump on the Elsa's version because it probably won't work. Luckily on my second attempt I only hit the middle and right side blocks. I made sure to stay as far away from the left side block as possible. Uh, and that meant I could go straight to all day. A-1 is actually a pretty easy level compared to the other levels in World A. A-2 gave me quite a bit of trouble for stupid reasons. A-3 gave me a lot of trouble because it's mostly random. Um, but A-1 is actually pretty okay. It's mostly just about jumping while jumping properly and just platforming and being good at Mario mostly. That's all it is. Uh, it's really not that hard if you like understand how 
the game works, and by the time you get to World 8 you probably should understand how the game works, unless you've skipped your way there. But yeah, 8-1, not that bad of a level. Dash 2 is where everything started to go downhill. Uh, there's a lot of problems with 8-2 and I'm not sure how many of them are based on the level, I'm not sure how many of them are based on me being stupid, and I'm not sure how many of them are based on uh, Super Mario All-Stars being a wonky part. Uh, like, for example, something that I started noticing in this level is that the game... Actually, I started noticing it in A-1, but uh, the game would just randomly drop inputs. And I don't know if that's just a problem with me. I don't know if that's a problem with the emulator. I don't know if that's a problem with the game itself. I don't know if that's a problem with my controller. I don't think it's a problem with my controller, but... Um, like, the game was just regularly dropping butts, and I have actually played All Stars on a real SNES before, and I had the same problem there. So I'm assuming that it's just a problem with the game, which isn't great. You probably don't want to make a game that drops inputs randomly. Especially inputs like jump or run, when there are certain parts of levels in your platforming game that require you to jump or run. Um, and in general, A-2 just felt way more difficult to me in this version than in the NES version. And again, I don't know if that's because the part is so wonky. I don't know if it's because the All-Stars version is just bad or what. I don't know if it's because I'm stupid. I don't know what it is, but this level brutalised me so much and I don't know why. Uh, yeah, I, I I honestly don't know, like, something that I started noticing in this level as well is that the bullet builds are super inconsistent. Sometimes they will shoot just one bullet, sometimes they'll double shoot, sometimes they will double shoot like one frame apart from each other. I had that happen in 8-3, you'll see that later, but it's so inconsistent. How are you supposed? to do platforming near bullet bills when you can't even predict when they're going to shoot. That's so bullshit. Genuinely, like, I I hated these last two levels because there's so many bullet bills and also hammer brothers, which are not fun to deal with. Who at Nintendo thought this was a good idea? Honestly, I want names and I want them sued. This level actually gives me an excuse to talk about something a little bit weird and unique to SMB1, which is how jumping on enemies works. You actually deal damage to an enemy or kill an enemy if you are falling onto the enemy, but that doesn't always mean what you think it means. Like, I mean, yeah, obviously if you fall on an enemy, you'll kill them, but there are certain situations where you are technically falling, where it doesn't look like you should kill an enemy, but you still do. An example is if you jump as a Goomba is falling onto you, then let go of the button and fall and the Goomba falls into you, you will still kill the Goomba even though you were underneath it. And there's sort of a slight example of that actually in this level, because as you can see here, I jumped onto this bullet bill from a really weird angle where if I wasn't technically falling, I would have died to it. And now here comes the part everybody who knows Super Mario Bros. 1 is waiting for. Hammer Bros. fucking suck. They are the worst enemy in this game, excluding the final Bowser. They are so inconsistent, they jump completely at random. When they jump is random. How high they jump if they're on like a platform is random. When they throw hammers is random. How many hammers they throw is random. The direction they move 
is random. Although it's, the direction of the move is a bit more predictable because it's always like sort of around the same position, but it's still random. Everything about the Hammer Bros in this game is pretty much random. There is nothing you can do to predict it. There is nothing you can do to really get the upper hand when it comes to them. All you have to do is just wait, hope that you're okay, and then make your move and hope it's the right move. The Even like if you just try and wait for them to jump and go underneath them, their jumping speed is so fast that you need to be incredibly fast to react to it. Because if you're even slightly too slow, they will just land on you and you'll die. It's so annoying and this is why this level took the longest for me to do out of every level in the game. This level burned through so many lives and actually gave me a game over on more than one occasion. I'm not kidding, this is the worst level in the game. So I had to go back to wait one and I'm gonna spare you replaying previous levels but this took a while and I died a few times on eight one and eight two because I just wasn't feeling it anymore because to be honest eight three is life sucking so yeah it took me a while to go back to eight three but eventually I did get back to eight three. This time I had a strategy which was to get the fire flower using the two mushrooms hidden in the two brick sections and then use the fire flower to kill the rest of the hammer bros and finish the level and that way I would also have a fire flower going into 8-4 which would make the final level a lot easier. Then I immediately lost him. And died. I was a little bit more careful on my second attempt, so this time I actually took it slowly, I took it patiently, and I made it to the end. Dash 4 is kind of really easy. It's nowhere near as difficult as 8 dash 3 is, but there is a hammer bro right at the end that could cause problems, and also potentially Bowser, but if I manage to keep the fire flower all the way to the end, then Bowser won't be a problem either. This castle is actually kind of an evolution of some of the earlier castles in the game that we didn't really get to see. Some of the castles in this game are basically mazes where you have to take the correct path otherwise you're forced to repeat the same section over and over again. This castle is kind of the same thing but instead of a maze uh, each section of the castle loops and there are various pipes um, and only one pipe will take you to the next area, the other pipes will send you back to the start of the castle. Uh, luckily it's pretty easy to figure out which pipe is the right one, even if like you've never played the game before, because it's always the final pipe in the section. So if you just run through the section once, um, sort of figure out where it starts looping and then figure out what the last pipe is in the cycle before it loops, you can just go down the last pipe and you'll carry on to the next section. I 
and just like that, Bowser is dead. I'm pretty sure they actually made Bowser take less fireballs in this version, because I swear he takes more fireballs than that in the NES version. But either way, that's it. That's Super Mario Bros. Uh, yeah, so is it possible to beat Super Mario Bros? Absolutely. Is it worth beating Super Mario Bros? God no, unless you like torturing yourself with um with bullet bills and amber bros and maybe dropped inputs if you're playing the SNES version. Uh no, absolutely do not play this. Unless like you want to, but realistically I don't think anybody needs to play the original Super Mario Bros. There's no reason to. Um like it's it's a fun game, yeah, but when you once you get to World 8, it's just not worth it anymore. World I kind of spikes in bullshit for literally no reason. And I was gonna end the video here, but then I thought to myself, well, somebody's probably gonna say something about me not doing the second quest, right? So I also did the second quest. I'm gonna skim through this because I didn't actually take any damage in the second quest up until 8-2. Uh, so I'm gonna like just skim through the first like few worlds, uh, first few levels, until we get to 82 and then we'll carry on from there. I actually lost all my lives in 83 and had to redo World 8 again, but overall like second quest is basically the same, it's just the enemies are slightly quicker, all Goombas are replaced by Buzzy Beetles and platforms, uh, moving platforms, you'll see this in 1-2. Um, are smaller, so you have to be more precise with your jumps, that's it. Uh, other than that, it's basically the exact same game. Like, the only hard part about playing the second quest is that you have to play 8-3 again, and 8-3 was already the hardest level in the game. Like, there's really not any different other than maybe the bullet bills move quicker, maybe the hamburgers move a bit quicker, maybe... The, I mean, the, the Koopas definitely move quicker, I noticed that, but... Yeah, it's pretty much the same game, all things considered, so just gonna skim through that and then uh, we'll be right back. And now it's time for Right Free. Get ready to watch me die a lot. So after getting that game over, I was a little bit demoralised and I kind of made a few mistakes on my return to 8-3, which meant I didn't have as many lives on my way back, but I was still determined to at least give it a try. Thank you. 
So I'd somehow done it first try this time, which was actually pretty good. So now all I had to do was get through 8-4 without taking any damage and I'd have an easy win. I'll be honest, I don't know what compelled me to swim up here. I... <sighs> this was a stupid de decision to make and it was a stupid mistake to make, but losing the fire flower doesn't necessarily mean that it's quite the end yet. Okay, never mind, it's, it's probably the end. At this point, I had a long think about everything I'd accomplished up until that point and whether it was really worth it to just keep doing this for no reason, since it, obviously the answer to the question, can you beat Super Mario Bros is yes, right? Like, nobody needs that question answering, that's not a question anybody wants answering, obviously you can. And I think I've proven that already if it wasn't for some reason already obvious that you could beat the game. And I, I had a really strong consideration at this point to just stop recording and make this the conclusion. Yes, you can beat the game. I didn't finish the second quest, but you can finish it. And then I thought that would be an unsatisfying ending, so... I gave it one more shot. <laughs> Before long I was back at 8-3 and before even longer I made it into 8-4 but I was missing the fire flower because I took damage at the end of 8-3. This didn't really bode well and I was concerned that I might not be able to make it to the end but I mean I've got to try right?
And then, even though the hammer didn't touch me, I was one life down with four left. This isn't too bad to be honest, but it still isn't looking good. I need to get past this hammer bro, and if I can, then it's over. Another unfortunate death, this time because I thought the hamburger was going to jump and he didn't. Two lives down, just three left. And this was it. We didn't have to deal with this last time because I had the fire flower, but normally Bowser's kind of a pain because he throws these hammers and also randomly breathes fire. Uh, the fire can either be two tiles high, three tiles high, or on the ground. If it's on the ground and you're in front of him waiting for him to jump underneath his- like you're waiting underneath the hammers waiting for him to jump and he breathes fire on the ground, you're just dead. There's nothing you can do about that. Which is why it's super dangerous to actually like try and get close to him in this battle but you have to at some point anyway because I mean how else are you gonna get past him you have to get close to him so I decided to just bite the bullet and give it a shot and it actually paid off as you can obviously tell so this was an incredibly lucky like Bowser fight because he didn't really give me like any bad luck here. I'm actually incredibly lucky that he didn't breathe fire on the ground because if he did I would have died and then I had to restart everything but yeah that's it. Is it possible to beat Super Mario Bros? Yes. Is it possible to beat Super Mario Bros second quest? Also yes but why would you want to? <laughs> like 8-3 is so garbage. Just don't do it. Just don't do it.